Hello. Charlie, do you know if this one's turned on or not? Speak up. Make sure my mic is on. I have a loud enough voice, but it'll be better if we can hear that. I'm not getting any. Should have checked it earlier. Use your outdoor voice. Usually there's a little light or something. Hello, hello, hello. Guess what? It's May Day. Can you hear now? All right, great. Thank you. All right. We are so delighted to welcome all of you here this morning. This is great to see so many faces and some faces that haven't been with us for a while or the spring weather has brought you back and we have visitors this morning and we are just delighted to have everyone here as well as those of you who are worshiping at home with us here at First Presbyterian Church in Texarkana. We hope that you feel welcome wherever you are watching from. Uh, we have a few announcements this morning. Um, you'll notice what's in your bulletin, but you still can't hear me? Okay. We'll have to. I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll keep talking. A lot. If When I get too loud, then just tell me to back off. <laughs> uh, the main thing I want to remind people of is that this evening at 6 o'clock, we will gather again, those of us who came um, last uh, Monday, to follow up on Dr. Branch's uh, recommendations. We had a wonderful group that met. There were about 21 of us all together and um, on Zoom and in the fellowship hall. We had a lot of good ideas and we're just really grateful for that help. You are welcome to come if you haven't been before to uh, have some input and we'd be delighted to have you. So I wanna thank everyone for doing that and encourage you uh, to come this evening if, if you can. Um, are there any other announcements that anyone can think of? If not, let us prepare our hearts for worship.
Please join me in the call to worship. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Blessing and honor and glory and might be to our God forever and ever. Alleluia. Please pray with me the prayer of adoration. Glory to you, O God. You have won victory over death, raising Jesus from the grave and giving us eternal life. Glory to you, O Christ, for us and for our salvation. You overcame death and opened the gate to everlasting life. Glory to you, O Holy Spirit. You lead us into the truth. Glory to you, O Blessed Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. ready to come on down. Come on down, Milo and, and Ashley and anybody else who feels like a, a child. We all should, you know. We're all children of God. You going to sit way over there? Okay. All right. Part of our scriptures today is about change. What is change? We do something different, right? Okay. I've got something here in nature that I think is really interesting. I don't know if you've ever seen it. What do we have here? A caterpillar. A caterpillar. Okay. Very pretty caterpillar. Mm -hmm. What happens to a caterpillar? It turns into a butterfly. It turns into a butterfly, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And a very pretty butterfly. Mm -hmm. So that's how God made change. Who would ever thought? This creepy little worm that crawls around eating leaves and everything turns into a beautiful butterfly. Okay. In our lesson, go ahead. I see. Does it change into anything? No. Okay, good. All right. Okay. In today's, one of our scriptures today, we're talking about a man named Saul. And Saul was about as bad to Christians as anyone could be. He just didn't like them, didn't think they were good. He, he did everything he could to hurt them, okay? One day Saul was out riding on the road 
And all of a sudden, this bright light shined upon him, and he couldn't see. And a voice came out and said, Saul, why are you hurting me? And Saul said, well, who are you anyway? And that's when he said, well, I'm God. I'm Jesus. Why are you hurting me? And then Saul kind of changed a little bit. Then he got scared, and then he couldn't see. And he said, well, what am I supposed to do, Lord? And that's when Jesus told him, said, you go into the town. Someone will tell you what to do. And so Saul changed to, later on, Paul changed from being a real bad person against Christians to one of our greatest leaders. So change is good sometimes, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day, the beautiful church we have. Father, we pray that and thank that you can change us to be what you want us to be. Amen. Thank you, Charlie. Let us now turn to God for a time of confession. Risen from the dead, Jesus Christ longs for us to know life in all its fullness, offering us renewal and refreshment, hope and forgiveness. Let us trust in the promise of Easter as we make our confession. Let us pray first silently and then together the prayer of confession. Generous God, in Jesus you have shown us love, love that seeks, love that suffers, love that survives all things. You call us, even command us, to show that love in our lives, yet we turn away from what you would have us do. We confess that the ways of love are not our ways. We deny and ignore hurt and hate, despise and reject. Have mercy on us. Help us to receive your love so that we can love others. Help us to receive your love so that we can love ourselves. The resurrection of Jesus shows us the grace of God is stronger than death and the love of God has no boundary. This is good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. As we listen to the words of your, from your holy scriptures, open our hearts and our minds that we might be opened to changes that you would have us make in our lives. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Our first passage this morning, as Charlie mentioned to the kids, comes from the book of Acts. And this is the very familiar story of Paul's conversion on the way. If you'd like to follow along in the Pew Bible, I'm actually reading from the uh, Common English Bible, so there's slight difference in translation. Meanwhile, Saul was still spewing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest, seeking letters to the synagogues in Damascus. If he found persons who belonged to the way, whether men or women, these letters would authorize him to take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. During the journey as he approached Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven encircled him. 
He fell to the ground and heard a voice asking him, Saul, Saul, why are you harassing me? Saul asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are harassing, came the reply. Now, get up and enter the city. You will be told what you must do. Those traveling with him stood there speechless. They heard the voice, but saw no one. After they picked Saul up from the ground, he opened his eyes, but he couldn't see. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. And then there are the verses about Ananias being called to go to Saul. And Ananias went to the house. He placed his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord sent me, Jesus who appeared to you on the way as you were coming here. He sent me so that you could see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, flakes fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after eating, he regained his strength. He stayed with the disciples in Damascus for several days. But right away, he began to preach about Jesus in the synagogues. He is God's son, he declared. Our second passage comes from John 21, which is about Jesus' uh, third appearance before the disciples. Last week, we heard, the second one appeared when, he, when Thomas was there, and this time he's on the uh, the shore. And they had been fishing <clears throat> and had, he had helped them catch fish. We pick it up with the, uh, at, on the beach. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. But none of the disciples could bring themselves to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they finished eating, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Jesus asked a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon replied, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. He asked a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was sad that Jesus had asked him a third time. Do you love me? He replied, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. We have two wonderful stories here, and if you throw Thomas in from last week, they're all about men who had issues, <laughs> different problems, we know that Saul was actually present at the stoning of Stephen and stood there and held the cloak of the people who were doing the stoning and approved of it. And as people have pointed out, he was a very, very faithful Jew. You know, he thought that he was doing exactly what was right in the eyes of, of his religion. But we have the feeling something had already touched him you know how sometimes when people protest about something, but it might be because they are beginning to get a glimmer of the truth and they don't want to admit it because it would make them have to change what they've always said they believed? And I think that's what's happened to Saul here. He's beginning to get these glimmers. Even as he goes ahead and tries to do what he thinks is right, He's already been touched by what he heard Stephen say in watching Stephen's death. So this is a man who's trying to keep faithful to what he believes, and yet God is going to show him a way to change. Peter, in that story, we know why he was sad. 
when Jesus asks him three times. Why was he sad? Because just before that, what had he done three times? People had said, do you know Jesus? And he had denied him three times. And so when Jesus asked, do you love me? That memory is coming back to Simon Peter. He says, oh yes, I love you, Lord, you know that. But what had he done? He had denied Christ. So he's feeling that. But in both of these passages, God is making a way for these men to change. For Saul, it's an amazing, amazing thing that's going to happen to him. He's blinded. And I also like that that's sort of the metaphor that they use here, because a lot of times we're blinded by what we feel or what we believe about something. You know, we just, my mother used to use the term that some people seem to be myopic. You know, myopic means like, like a horse has blinkers. You only see what's right in front of you and you can't see the whole picture. Uh, and you're not willing to take the blinders off <laughs> because you're so intent on going the way you want to go. Someone else used the metaphor here of, of a jigsaw puzzle. You know, and I don't know about you, but I love jigsaw puzzles. But when you first get the puzzle, there's just this mass of pieces, and you have no idea uh, you know, how it's going to turn out, or maybe a piece will be lost. But eventually, that is going to take shape. But, but until it does, that picture is broken. We can imagine Saul is a broken person. Peter is a broken person. I think Taylor talked about this last week too, didn't he? We're all broken people. And one of the hardest things for us is to realize that God loves us in the midst of our brokenness and he's going to find a way to make this work. So we have Paul. He's been blinded. He's heard the Lord. And he was literally thrown to the ground. And I didn't realize this, but on that journey to Damascus, he was with the Sanhedrin, and it was a 140-mile walk. <laughs> and he couldn't even uh, socialize with them because they were not part of his group. So he was basically walking along by himself uh, when this happens to him. And when he's taken, but they help him into the town. And when he gets there, Ananias comes to him. And in the part I didn't read, Ananias is very hesitant. He says, Lord, I don't really want to go see Saul. Saul's been persecuting us. You know, he's here. He's come here to Damascus to put us all in prison. And the Lord says, no, go and do what I tell you. That's an imperative, you know, go and do. And when he gets there, what is the first thing he does? He doesn't hold back. He says, Brother Saul, Brother Saul, and then does what the Lord has required him to do, touches him, and then Saul, now Paul, can see. So Ananias overcomes his prejudices about Paul, his fears about Paul, to encounter him as another human being that he can share the love of God with. And when he does what has been asked of him, that completes Paul's conversion from a person who persecuted to a person who was willing to be persecuted as he continued to spread the gospel all over the world. Peter is the same. He followed Jesus, but he was always a little you know, hot-headed. And then he does the denial, and I can just imagine how he felt. When I read these scriptures, you know, you try to put yourself in the place of these people and imagine what it would be like to actually be there. And I have to admit, I don't know that it would be very easy to share a meal with either Paul or Peter <laughs> because they're so intense <laughs> about uh, and, and uh, you know, know that they have the right way. But they're 
God has shown them their brokenness in both of these and has welcomed them into the family of God. So Peter, he hears Jesus say, do you love me? And he says, yes, you know. Until that third time, he says, yes, you know that I do. What does Jesus ask him to do every time, though? And this is really the heart of the matter. We're broken people, all of us, yet God loves us, wants the best for us, wants us to be part of his family, and then what are we to do? We're not just to sit in our houses. We're to go out and feed the sheep, feed the lambs. I think it's interesting. He starts with feed my lambs, all the way from the infants, the littles like Maddie back there, <laughs> to the sheep. And I've been around a lot of sheep in my career overseas. They're not the smartest animals, <laughs> but they need care. <laughs> And Jesus says, I want you to feed my sheep. They know my voice. You be the one. Take care of them. And that taking care of them is all the things that we're asked to do. Visit the prisoners, feed the hungry. All the ways that Christ has shown us that we need to show love to others. One last thing that... Um, image that I love. There is, if I can get the name of this right, there is a type of, of uh, pottery uh, that's, uh, the Japanese word for it is kentsugi, kentsugi. I may have mentioned this once before, but I just think it's such a beautiful image. You've got this puzzle, this jigsaw puzzle with the broken pieces that's being put to, back together, but you also have um, pottery that gets broken. And there is uh, this school of pottery. Sometimes you might say, oh, it's broken. I either need to throw it away. It's totally useless. Or maybe I can fix it so that people can't see that it's been repaired. All right. It'll look like new, but it's still a little weak. They actually use gold to repair the cracks. So what you end up with is a beautiful vase that's got gold where the cracks are. And what happens if you were to shine a light into that piece of pottery? It would shine out through the gold. That light would shine out through the gold. So that's what we are. We're broken pieces of pottery that Christ is putting back together and we're able to show Christ's love. His light is what's gonna shine out for us because we're his hands and feet now. And the other thing that we never must ever forget, we're not doing this alone. He showed us the way, but left the Spirit. The next time I'm up here, it'll be Pentecost. And I'm excited about Pentecost. It's that day when we really want to celebrate the fact that we can go out and shine that light. One of the people that really took this to heart. There's a, a, a French, I think he's Canadian, writer named Henry Nouwen, and some of you may know Henry Nouwen. He, he wrote many beautiful books. Uh, I was introduced to him when I first went off to the mission field and had come across a book called Gracias, which means thank you in Spanish. And in that book, he talked about uh, being thankful for being put in a situation that was unfamiliar to him, <laughs> being thankful for being challenged to learn a new language, to, to learn about new people. He was thankful for that. Then he went back home and he, did, he was a writer and very highly esteemed. And then in the last 12 years of his life, he had a change of heart and quit everything that he was doing and went to live in a community in Toronto called Larch, which is a community for adults with disabilities. And he chose to just be a common laborer in that home, working with those folks for the last 12 years of his life. He knew that that was where God was calling him to let his light shine in the world. 
So as you think about yourself, first of all, know that you are loved and that everyone around you is loved. Know that you are all God's children created in God's image. You're going to hear that from me every time I stand up here. <laughs> We're all created in God's image. We're all children of God. Everyone is. We're all broken people. And yet God puts us back together. God has a plan for us. God wants us to be his light in the world. In a minute, we're going to share communion together, which is another way that we feel connected. And I like to remember that this is happening all over the world, not just on World Communion Sunday. Whenever I had communion at my church in Khartoum, it was in the evening there, which I knew was going to be about the same time you were having it here on a Sunday morning. And I always thought of that. I'm not in Texarkana, but I'm here, and you are sharing the same meal that I am. And that happens everywhere. So as we do that, think of people that you'd like to see around the table with you. Think of who you might invite to join the table. Think of who needs to be here with us, and that's everyone. Amen and amen. Let us now stand as we say what we believe, and it is, comes from the scriptures from Romans, so please read with me the profession of faith. We believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for we know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. We are convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
time for our offering, knowing that all that we have is a gift from God. We ask that you return your tithes and offerings and also your lives to Christ. Also, the offertory anthem is actually hymn number 314. And I'd like for you to find that in your hymnal, please. 314. The choir will be singing the verses, but I want you to join us in on the refrain when we get to it, when you feel ready to do so. It's a very easy hymn. It's called Longing for Light, We Wait in Darkness. Receive these gifts, not only of our 
worldly goods, but of our very lives, so that our broken pieces may shine your light into this world. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God creator and ruler of the universe. At your word, the earth was made and spun on its course among the planets. Your hand formed us from the dust of the earth and set us among all your creatures to love and serve you. When we were unfaithful to you, you kept faith with us. When we were slaves in Egypt, you broke the bonds of our oppression, brought us through the sea to freedom, and made covenant to be our God. By a pillar of fire, you led us through the desert to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. You spoke of love and justice in the prophets, and in the word made flesh, you lived among us, manifesting your glory. He died that we might live and is risen to raise us to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name, praising you forevermore. holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, whom you sent to save us. He came with healing in his touch and was wounded for our sins. He came with mercy in his voice and was mocked as one despised. He came with peace in his heart and was met with violence and death. By your power, he broke free from the prison of the tomb, and at his command, the gates of hell were opened the one who is dead now lives. The one who humbled himself is raised to rule over all creation. The lamb is on the throne. The one ascended on high is always with us as he promised. Okay. We give you thanks that the Lord Jesus on the night before he died took bread and he broke it. And after giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering your boundless love revealed to us in Jesus Christ, we break bread and share the cup, giving ourselves to you to live with him in joy and praise. Great is the mystery of our faith. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, and that we may be his body for the world. 
By your Spirit, unite us with Christ and one another until we feast with him and with all your saints in your eternal realm of justice and peace. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say with the confidence of children, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Living Christ, as you open the scriptures to us, you make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Let us now go forth from this place, fed at your table, filled by the Spirit, to walk with you all the days of our lives and proclaim the glory of your resurrection to all the world. Amen. benediction and then charge you. <laughs> the steadfast love of God, the abundant grace of Jesus Christ, abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with you on this day and always. I charge you, don't be blind. We know we're broken, but God enables us to see. Let God's light shine through our broken pieces that he's put back together and see God in the face of all you see. Amen. Amen.